It's the Mustang Insider Show. All right, we welcome you to another edition of the Mustang Insider Podcast. And for Cal Poly, it is a championship week, at least uh, on the back nine, among other things. Cal Poly women's golf three-peating. They are the Big West Conference champions for a third straight season. This one has a different type of feel to it. Courtney Roberts, in her first season as the Mustang women's golf head coach, takes it home as the Big West champions. Coach, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, take me through the, the roller coaster it's been the last year since you got to campus, got to know your student athletes, and eventually able to put together a championship caliber group. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is this is cool. First time on as well. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's just been a, an absolute uh, joy. Definitely you know, a journey from when we arrived, you know, officially accepted the position mid-July and then moved to slow at the end of August with my husband and our uh, twin girls. So it's it's been a whirlwind and then hired Beth Lilly, our amazing assistant coach. And she started in August and moved from, you know, University of Virginia where she was at. And, and we put roots down in August. And um, no, it's just been really, really neat um, with this group of young women on the team and how being a new coaching staff um, in, in, you know, a new place, just how welcoming they were to us from the start, just really um, buying into uh, us as coaches and then also just their openness to learning and growth. Um, when, when we came in, Beth and I were just really impressed by the amount of talent on the team, but then also just um, their their willingness and eagerness to learn. And as a coach, that's, you know, the number one thing you can ask for is just that buy-in from the beginning. And then, so it's been fun to see throughout the course of the year, uh, their their growth. And then to cap it all off, our, our first win of the season, we knocked on the door a couple times throughout the season, but couldn't think of a better place to bring home our first trophy than at the Big West Championship. Yeah, you had a fourth place finish uh, previously in March, right, back in uh, in Hawaii. That was kind of a, a good warm-up for the Big West Championships. Not quite the setting of Hawaii, but you go down to Las Vegas and you guys held the lead into the final days. And uh, it, it got a little nerve-wracking there towards the finish line, but you guys were able to pull it out. Uh, what was the, the group's mindset kind of going into that week, knowing that, hey, you guys w were very close in Hawaii. You guys have competed in, in other different matches throughout the year in different locations different regions of the country. Uh, what what was the confidence level going into this Big West Championship week, especially for some of the returners that had hoisted that trophy at the end of the tournament each of the previous two seasons? Yeah, no, it was it was really, I mean, we'd been in position, we'd, uh, you know, at Charlotte at the end of the fall, or sorry, at Colorado State, we were in position to win, came in second there and really had a strong team finish where we're finishing under par. And then in Charlotte, runner up there as well. And Hawaii was arguably, I'd say, the best field there with Pepperdine, who won, and UCLA. So each tournament we were building on and, and learning and the strength of our team. And that's really what came through. And I think the biggest difference maker between us and, you know, Long Beach had had a really great season. But the biggest difference maker was just the the ability for our team, one through five, everyone can step up and and also, I mean, our, our sixth player, it was very competitive in deciding what lineup we were going to take. And uh, but it, that's the strength of our team is just one through you know, our, our entire lineup is strong. And we've had many, many players shoot under par, um, just the steadiness. And then we played really, I mean, it was challenging conditions. The first day, it wasn't quite as windy, uh, but then rounds uh, two and three, we were anywhere between 15 to 25 mile an hour steady winds. And, wow. you know, that's something that from a scheduling standpoint, that was another thing, just building experience throughout the course of the year. We traveled, you know, we played a schedule all over the country and we were in, you know, windy conditions preparing for that. So uh, we spoke about that throughout the entire course of the year, just the learning and the growth and working on our ball flight in those windy conditions. Obviously, afternoons here on the Central Coast get windy as well. And just they bought in and, and they wanted to learn on how they could improve, um, you know, in those windy, tough conditions, how they could lower the ball flight and how they could 
really um, grow as players and just have a better mindset. I think that was a really key piece for us as we we handled the conditions better than the other teams. And that was something we spoke about throughout the whole spring, but really emphasized as we were there in Las Vegas and knew these 20 mile an hour winds were coming and we embrace it and we're like, all right, bring it on. So it was, it was fun to see the team, um, you know, just thrive in that condition. I, I think a lot of golf fans that maybe watch more professional golf than they do college golf don't really understand uh, the team aspect, right? Behind college golf. I mean, we're out there, we're pulling for, uh, John Rahm and Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson, among others, right? Um, on, the, on the women's side, Michelle Wu has been so influential over the years. Um, that's a, a standout household name that stands out to me. But among your group, I mean, who, who, are, some, who are some key uh, golfers that really kind of helped fuel this run in Las Vegas to ensure that the trophy would stay here on the Central Coast? Yeah, I mean, that that's where I'm saying just the, the team effort standpoint where that first day we came out and every we had four players shoot one over par. Nobody, uh, you know, played exceptionally well, but everyone played, you know, steady, good golf. And that was that was huge. And then, you know, the second day, um, you know, Jensen had a bit of a, a struggle there the second day and and Liz stepped in and put in a, a great score for us. And that's been just something our team has done is that, you know, fourth or fifth player stepping up. And um, that's the beauty in college golf of the drop score. We right. we do have five players compete and four scores count. So that was something that, you know, definitely us between um, the rest of the competition, Big West, there were a lot of substitutions that coaches made. And, um, you know, that was something that we talked about in advance that the only substitutions we would make would be injury or illness. And, I think that's also, um, you know, I think that's something that's important is just the the belief in each other that they have. Um, something else interesting, Jensen's been coming off an injury and she actually uh, had a cortisone inject, injection just before Hawaii. So she was, you know, hadn't touched a club between March 8th to just 10 days before the tournament, just resting up and making sure that we were able to give her the best chance to stay healthy and be pain-free. And in Hawaii, that Carissa Wu, our sixth player, she stepped up to help us with that fourth place finish. So Carissa was there all week, ready to go if we needed her. And, you know, fortunately, everyone was healthy. And um, that's just been that buy in and just support of, of the rest of their team has been really key to us. Well, I see you've uh, been able to kind of update the decor in the in the office there. I know uh, it's not even been a year since you've been at Cal Poly, but you're able to to kind of put your fingerprints on um, that that coach's room as well. I saw you kind of showing off the trophy earlier. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure uh, you didn't mind lugging that all the way back from Las Vegas. Let, let's talk a little bit about um, how, how you got to Cal Poly. Now, you, you were previously the associate head coach up at Washington. Um, you had experience a, as a head coach at Oklahoma State. Why was why was Cal Poly the right fit for you to get back into uh, being a head coach, uh, among other things? Yeah, um, for for me, looking for that holistic balance that, um, you know, striving for academic excellence as well as athletic excellence, that's something is me from a value standpoint as a coach is incredibly important and, you know, had amazing experience at Oklahoma State as a head coach there where uh, that athletic excellence was um, just such a focus being, you know, a real, really focused golf school and then at Washington, you know, saw a bit more of an academic focus. So when the opportunity to be head coach uh, arose this past summer at Cal Poly, that was something that, you know, the values of the athletic department and the school and institution were key, uh, as well as just the support, the the passion that the people in the community have for college golf, women's college golf, that Cal Poly golf family, that's something that is so incredibly special and just that belief in, Hey, what's it going to take for us to be, um, you know, haven't been in a national championship yet, but you know, the, the dream big, uh, you know, the goals are here and people are believe in that. And it's just finding a pathway to show that. So, um, you know, from Dawn to president Armstrong, to all of our amazing, uh, donors and supporters, uh, that was something. And then just the niceness of people on the central coast, that's something that, sure. Growing up in Kansas City and in the Midwest, um, 
I, I'd been here for the Bruin Wave tournament at Slow Country Club several times with both my Oklahoma State and Washington teams. And I was just always um, captivated by how much, you know, the community, just how nice everyone was. And um, so, so this had always stood out to me as a really amazing place. And um, and then when the opportunity arose, I'm just fortunate that, um, that that they selected me and I had the chance to to be the head coach and help lead these amazing young women. Hey, I don't think there's any question. Uh, this is the best place to be in California. You get a little <laughs> little L.A. flavor, a little Bay flavor without all the traffic. Uh, we get to see our stars at night and uh, our beaches are nice and clean and often not crowded on the weekends. It's 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 a good kept secret here on the Central Coast that we we kind of want to keep on the down low, but uh, winning championships certainly brings a lot of attention to your program. How much does it help to have the the facilities that that Cal Poly's kind of been able to uh, create for the golf program? So obviously, out at Dairy Creek, that's just a that's a next level type of practice facility. And you mentioned being able to practice in those windy conditions really helped you when you got to Las Vegas. How impressive is that facility for? a program like Cal Poly out of the big West. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's such a statement. That's something that it shows, you know, facilities show that commitment that the institution, that the supporters have to uh, the program and then also just to athletics. So uh, just a, you know, first impression for me, I was just blown away by the fact that not only we have this amazing facility, but then also the proximity to campus. That's something that, you know, not very many schools in the entire country, let alone right. California or the West Coast, have more 10 minutes from campus. And being a, a challenging academic institution, time is of the essence. And I believe that's a really big difference maker for our student athletes is, you know, they, they go to class in the morning, they come out here, they can have lunch, so they can be really efficient, work incredibly hard, and then get back and, and study uh, and get ready to go for the next day. But um, no, I mean, I can't say enough what a difference the the initial, you know, catalyst that facilities are. And then having a group of young men, women and men who love the game and want to work hard and you take advantage of it. So, you know, you got to have that first and then you got to have the right people here to really work hard and take advantage of, you know, what what opportunities are here. Well, the NCAA regionals are coming up. You guys have still got uh, much work to do. I, I guess that's the exciting part about winning a championship is not only getting to kind of bask in those emotions and hold that trophy and put that uh, poster on the wall, but it, it's about, hey, let's let's continue our season. Let's stay alive. Let's keep winning. Let's keep doing this thing. So as you look ahead, and you've got some time, right? I mean, it's it's April 20th right now. You've got a good week plus into May before the NCAA regionals begin. Any idea of where you guys might end up? And uh, how, how are you guys kind of prepping with, with a lot of time in between the Big West final and NCAA postseason play? Yeah, that was something, you know, really neat where we have two fifth-year seniors, uh, Elizabeth Schultes and Vanessa Wang, and seeing, you know, their teammates playing for them on the opportunity to extend their season. That was something really special in that final round as well. But um, right now, we're having to rest and recharge, get caught up on schoolwork. <laughs> Obviously with golf, it takes a lot of time and we're away in, in this class. So getting them back and on top of all their schoolwork, uh, being refreshed and recharged. So we had a couple off days and then they're going to come out and practice on their own. And then starting Monday, we're going to hit the ground running for, um, you know, some pretty, pretty intense practices, but also just have a, a lot of fun. And then I think it's likely you know, there's um, six regionals now for the women's championship. And of that, uh, now five teams advance from each region. So that's something new this year. Last year, there were only 24 teams on the women's side that advanced to the national championship. So excited that we got six more opportunities to to make it there. So uh, Palouse Ridge, so Washington State is hosting. Um, great golf course. You know, during my time at Washington, I went there. A couple of times, I think that's a course that really suits us. TPC San Antonio as well. Um, typically, the they're going to try to keep you as close as they can to home. Uh, but then in addition to that, so the West Coast teams try to keep them on the West and then have evenly balanced fields. So I think it's pretty likely that we end up in one of those two spots, um, Palouse Ridge or TPC San Antonio. 
well, I, I can't help but feel like you wouldn't mind a trip up to the Palouse, visit your old uh, Apple Cup rivals over there at Wazoo. I, I know uh, your old friends at Washington are probably really pulling for you guys, especially um, if that were to happen. Coach, thanks so much for taking some time. I know I speak for all Cal Poly fans, Cal Poly athletic supporters everywhere. We're so proud of what you've been able to do with the program. And uh, congratulations on winning the Big West. And we wish you the best of success as you move forward and start to figure out where you're going to be for the postseason here coming up. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, amazing group of young women and uh, amazing fans that we have here at Cal Poly. So thanks for the time. Thanks again, Coach Roberts. All right, good stuff from Coach Roberts and the Cal Poly Women's Golf Program. Officially a powerhouse at this point, right? Three straight Big West titles. She has just kept the momentum rolling from the previous regime. Really excited to see what that group is able to do in the upcoming postseason. As always, we'd like to thank our partners for making the Mustang Insider possible. Dignity Health Central Coast offering all-star treatment you can trust. And Grocery Outlet. Mustang fans, as the weather gets warmer, summer's just around the corner. Head on over to Grocery Outlet at Los Osos Valley and Madonna Road. Take advantage of their specials on meats fit for your barbecue. Tri-tip roast, $7.99 a pound. Smithfield baby back ribs, just $2.99 a pound. Start barbecue season early with the values at Grocery Outlet San Luis Obispo, where every day is a bargain market day. You've been watching and listening to the Mustang Insider. Until next time. This has been the Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.